The 22-year-old left on a cross-country road trip with her boyfriend, Brian Laundry back in July. A month and a half ago, he returned alone and is now wanted by the FBI for credit card fraud. Disgusting Really quick update in regards to Brian Laundrie. The FBI probes slain fugitives' texts and emails as they try to close the Petito case. Let's talk about this law and crime. The FBI will have pieced together Brian Laundrie's digital footprints and be aware of the movements and the communication he's had via email and more leading up to the days of his passing away, according to one expert who cracked this case. Laundrie's remains are now being examined by a forensic anthropologist in Sarasota County to try to determine exactly how it was he passed away. Authorities are also trying to repair a personal notebook that was ravished and torn apart but retrieved from a dry bag near his body as part of the investigation into the passing away of his girlfriend, Gabby Petito. Crucial to their investigation is going to be Laundry's digital communication. This includes texts, emails, social media, and internet browsing history prior to him being found. News Nation correspondent Brian Enton believes law enforcement already has pieced together much of this puzzle. Brian Enton is the one who cracked this story. He said, quote, I believe the FBI knows a lot of those questions and they will be resolved. If they close this case, those documents will be available through public search records. Gabby Petito's family strongly suspects that Brian Laundry was impersonating her in text messages long after her passing to try to confuse them and halt an investigation. Cell phone records should also be able to track his movements between Wyoming and Florida, where he returned to on September 1st. Mr. Enton believes that the FBI could release their findings linking Laundry to Gabby Petito's passing before closing the case. If they don't do that, there's technically a chance that there is still a person of interest out there, he says. I believe that would calm the public down and give Gabby Petito's family some kind of closure, he says. When asked about this case, his responses were as follows. That was one of the moments I got emotional. News Nation correspondent Brian Enton says he found body cam footage showing a distraught Gabby Petito speaking to Moab police officers after the fight with Brian Laundry, and it was deeply distressing to watch. Quote, that was one of the moments I got kind of emotional. I felt especially sad. He said the release of the footage from the August 12th encounter with cops altered people's perception of the couple, who had shared seemingly idyllic photos and videos of their van life trip. Quote, all we had seen up until that point was the YouTube videos and Instagram posts and all of those beautiful images of Gabby and Brian. And when that video came out, it was like, wow, there's another side. We really didn't know about it. It was at that moment that we realized there was another side to this. And I think people's fascination with this case got even more intense. This journalist became the most trusted source of information in the Petito Laundry story. He says the truth will eventually come out. Quote, I think the FBI knows a lot of those questions that they want to resolve this case. The city of Moab, Utah is returning almost $3,000 in fees. It's charged several media organizations for the release of the body cam footage. Depicting a police officer encounter with Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie. Lisa Church, a spokesperson for the city, pointed out that once the video had been prepared for one request, no other entity should have been charged as the actual cost of providing the record would be nothing. Even if one person were charged a fee, once that document is created, everyone else should not have been charged. Gabby Petito has since then gone on to get her own foundation by way of her father, Joe Petito. The Gabby Petito Foundation is now offering advice where people in violent relationships can go for help. Gabby's father, Joe Petito, announced the creation of a new foundation in September to help people in dangerous relationships and assist families locating their missing children.
In an interview last month, Mr. Petito said that they had been inundated with messages from vulnerable young women who found themselves in similar situations to his daughter, who was strangled in what police have described a domestic violence incident. Now the foundation's website has been updated to include tips on where people can go for help. Under the hashtag Justice for Gabby, the site says, If you or someone you know is impacted by relationship abuse, you are not alone. There are many resources available that can support you, your path for a safer future. The link for that foundation will be below in the description box. The internet has obsessed over this Brian Laundry case to the point where they scoured the Carlton Reserve for Brian Laundry clues in the days after his remains were discovered. After the partial skeletal remains of Brian Laundry were found in a park connected to the Carlton Reserve, internet obsessed sleuths have been scouring the area searching for additional clues. One woman whose Twitter name is just Olivia claims she found bones. 60 yards from the spot where Mr. Laundry's remains were located. She shared images of the bones, which included spikes along their edges. The independent Greg Graskowski has more on the bones, likely origin, and other objects found in the Carlton Reserve as well. There was a water bottle that seemed identical to Gabby Petito's, which was also found in the park. Forensic anthropologists are now examining Laundry's remains and say they may have a result by the end of November. Stephen Bertolino, the attorney representing the Laundry family, said that the results of a forensic anthropologist examination of Brian Laundry's remains are expected by the end of the November. Laundry was a person of interest in the disappearing death of his fiancée, Gabby Petito. His remains were found in the Carlton Reserve, a protected swamp, on October 20th, more than a month after he went missing. Miss Petito's remains were found on September 19, 2021. Her passing was ruled a homicide by way of manual strangulation. Mr. Bertolino told Fox News that he believed that the forensic anthropologist examination will conclude within two to three weeks. There were dark themes that permeated Brian Laundrie's digital footprints thus far. Brian Laundrie's final social media post around the time of Gabby Petito's passing away shows the cover of a book titled Burnt Out, How to Cope with Autistic Burnout. While it's known that he had autism and he was on the spectrum, he and Miss Petito told officers attending a domestic disturbance in Utah on the 12th that they were suffering from a mental health breakdown. Laundrie's social media posts often featured macabre drawings and references to violence video games. In a separate Pinterest post, text at the bottom of an Im image read, Don't try to find me, and I have finally escaped my master's wicked clutch. To the others I say join me, bite the hand that feeds you, viva la birthday. Brian Laundrie's social media account may provide clues to his state of mind before the passing of his girlfriend, Gabby Petito. Abduction survivor Elizabeth Smart has given us her opinion on the Petito family closure, quote unquote. She said that the Petito family will not receive the kind of closure that she got when her captor was sentenced. Quote, I mean, I can only speak for me. And I know when I finally saw that my captor was sentenced, that the trial happened, that it was finished. It was really the closing of a chapter for me, she told CBS News. Elizabeth Smart was 14 when she was kidnapped in June of 2002 from her home in Utah by Brian David Mitchell. She was held captive for approximately nine months before she was found 18 miles away from her home. Her captor was subsequently given life in prison in 2011. She said, quote, so I can only imagine for Gabby Petito's broken family that there is a sense of loss and a lack that they don't get to receive that and they don't get to receive that type of closure. If you or anyone that you know is suffering from domestic violence, please make sure you call the hotline written here on the screen and in the description box.